Um, our scripture passage is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, um, verses 1 through 3 and 11 through 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. And a few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and I will go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and he went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and he put his arms around him and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry, and he refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. And um, Chris is going to uh, share the teaching with us. Thank you, Adam. Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well this evening. So I'm going to start tonight with a somewhat provocative question, but it's one that we're going to return to. So I want you to kind of keep it in the back of your mind. Is justice always fair? That seems like a somewhat strange question at first. I mean, clearly justice and fairness are related ideas. It's hard to even talk about justice without at least considering what would be fair. But when you read something like the parable of the workers where people who worked hard all day long received, received the same wage as the people who had only worked for a few minutes, it becomes really hard to say that that's fair in any normal sense of the word. 
Now, our parable tonight deals with that same sort of tension. Luke 15 opens with Jesus eating with tax collectors and sinners, while the scribes and Pharisees grumble in the background. You see, in their mind, it was unfair that Jesus welcomed people like that. Those people had rebelled against God, and to just welcome them back into God's kingdom seemed to cheapen the work that the scribes and the Pharisees had put into serving God and studying his word, teaching and praying and fasting. But Jesus was treating these people as if their past sins just didn't matter. It wasn't fair. And in response to this, Jesus tells three parables. One about a lost sheep, one about a lost coin, and one about a lost child. Now in the first two, he talks about the great joy in heaven when a sinner repents. But it's into that third story that Jesus throws a barb directed squarely at those scribes and Pharisees. Now, it's a pretty familiar story to us. A man has two sons. The younger one demands his inheritance, moves to a distant country, and squanders it. No one in that country will help him, so he goes back to his father, who welcomes him home with open arms. So far, so similar to those other parables. Joy at the return of what was lost. But this is where the parable departs, where it throws in that barb to the Pharisees. Because you see, that man had another son. And that son was at that very moment out working the fields shouldering the responsibilities of both himself and his wayward little brother. And he comes home from his hard day of labor to find that they're in the middle of a party. And when he finds out that it's in honor of the guy who they hadn't heard from in years, who took half of their family's assets and just squandered them, he wants nothing to do with it. because it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair that his brother just got to come back after everything that he had done. It wasn't fair that his brother got to eat crops that he had never planted and a calf that he had never raised. It wasn't fair that his father was showing such honor to this prodigal child just for doing one time what the older brother had been doing every single day, showing up. And so he sits outside his father's house, alone, in the dark, cut off from the feast. And the parable actually ends before we find out if he ever went back inside. Even when his father comes out to plead with him to join the celebration, we never learn whether he sat back down at the table or wandered off into the night. And that ambiguity is very intentional. Because that was the choice facing the scribes, facing the Pharisees, and yes, facing us. Come in from the cold and celebrate the return of sinners, or remain forever outside our Father's house. Now, usually people call this the parable of the prodigal son, but 
And that kind of misses the point. When we focus on the younger son, we end up with a picture of God waiting patiently for our return, ready to forgive. And yes, that is all absolutely true. But that's the background to the story. The people Jesus was aiming this parable at weren't the ones that thought they had sinned and needed to return to God. It was aimed at the Pharisees who sat outside the door because they refused to eat with sinners. And I think recognizing that is key to seeing the point that Jesus was trying to drive home. It is better to be sinful and repentant than it is to be righteous and unforgiving. Let me repeat that because I really want it to sink in. It is better to be sinful and repentant than it is to be righteous and unforgiving. And that isn't fair. At least not by any human conception of fair. So returning back to our original question, is justice always fair? No. No, fair is the minimum bar that we have to clear. Justice is a state where everyone is treated at least fairly, but often far better than they deserve. It's fairness plus generosity. It's equity plus grace. The world loves the idea of fair, but it's suspicious of generosity and honestly deeply disturbed by grace. After all, the world in this parable is represented by that far off country, the place where people saw the younger brother starving and no one gave him anything. Even when he got to the point where the fodder for the livestock started to look appetizing. Now, maybe they ignored him because they had seen his wastefulness, or maybe they ignored him because as an Israelite in a distant land, he didn't look like them or sound like them. Or maybe they ignored his need because that's just what the world does. Regardless, the world in this story is a place that treats its pigs better than it treats this man in need. And in contrast, the father's household is one where the lowest servant has enough to eat and more to spare. And even the rankest of sinners is welcomed back into the family. And in case you missed it, that's us, or at least it's supposed to be. The Father's house is the church, it's heaven, it's the world as God intends it to be. And like that older brother, we are given a choice. Join the party or remain in the darkness. And if we can just pull our heads out of the world for two seconds, we'll see that that's not fair. And thank God it's not fair. It's grace. Amen.